friends, I am Dr. Harmeet Goyal. Today I will be sharing a video on the case presentation of gynecology. This is just a trailer based on the present NBE pattern. So some of the clinical cases I am just discussing in this video. So student, I am just sharing my screen. The OBSGYNI clinical case discussion based on the present NBE pattern. This is just a trailer. Okay. So I am taking up a case of... Uh, gynae patient a 48 year old lady presented with intermenstrual bleeding for two months no associated pain no hot flushes she has three children she's taking pop that is progesterone only pill for contraception pap smear was done reports were normal <clears throat> bimanual examination reveals uterus is normal non-tender adding excise free all blood reports were normal, including the coagulation profile, hemogram, thyroid function test, blood sugar, and ultrasound was done. Ultrasound showed this report. Okay. Next line of management. Is it DNC, that is dilatation and curettage, hysteroscopy, oral contraceptive pills or hysterectomy. Let us just see question once more. Number one, she is a 48 year old female. Okay. Presented with intermenstrual bleeding. Intermenstrual bleeding is what is called as metro regia. Metro regia or we can say it is acyclical bleeding. We call it as intermenstrual bleeding or acyclical bleeding. That means she is having menstruation. Over that, in between there is, between the periods, there is intermenstrual bleeding for two months. Okay. Let's see further what is written in the history. She has no associated pain that means and no hot flushes that means there is no history of associated dysmenorrhea okay she had three living children three living children that means family is complete so her age is 48 years presented with intermenstrual bleeding no associated pain that is no dysmenorrhea okay so they're trying to rule out endometriosis although endometriosis is a disease more of the reproductive age group they are trying to rule out adenomyosis which is usually occurring after the age of 40 years they have also ruled out abnormal uterine bleeding or you can say somewhat they have given you the history coagulation profile hemogram thyroid function test blood sugar are all normal that means there is no thyroid disorders which is leading to this kind of menstrual disturbance blood sugar is normal that is no diabetes coagulation profile is normal okay so all this they have already ruled out in the history so that means there is some local cause okay students one thing remember whenever there is intermenstrual bleeding you should think of ruling out the endometrial cancer it can be endometrial polyp okay so you should be ruling out this so in this question you can see some image, we cannot be as expert as a radiologist, but you can see some lesion like this. Okay. So according to me, it appears more of an endometrial polyp. Okay. Endometrial polyp. So I would like to take up this patient for some investigation which can confirm my diagnosis confirm my diagnosis and 
simultaneously i would like to rule out the possibility of endometrial cancer also so friends i am not in favor of dnc if you are expecting an endometrial polyp if there is a facility for hysteroscopy being available okay so i would like to do hysteroscopy in this case ocps is already ruled out because ocps age above 40 years is a relative contraindication okay so she is already taking progesterone only pill for contraception so the cause can be endometrial polyp endometrial cancer okay or progesterone only pill sometimes can present with irregular bleeding but ultrasound is confirming or showing us the probability of an endometrial polyp hysterectomy again no way because number 1 it is not cancer number 2 we want a histopathological examination report so i would like to go for hysteroscopy which will confirm your diagnosis of a polyp like this and simultaneously i can take a biopsy or any curatings if there is any suspicious area number 2 i can Set out this polyp in the same setting. So hysteroscopy is the best answer as it will confirm your diagnosis. Number two, from any suspicious area, we can take a biopsy. Number three, in the same setting, <clears throat> we can resect out this endometrial polyp and send it in the formalin vial for the histopathological examination. So hysteroscopy will solve. all the purpose okay so why the polyp has to be removed number 1 to eliminate the cause of bleeding number 2 to obtain a histopathological report to ensure that it is not malignant number 3 any women above 40 years and if there is intermenstrual bleeding then possibility of endometrial cancer should be ruled out and if the age is less than 40 years uh you know like in one sitting 100% all the gynecologists will not be in favor of hysteroscopy so let us not talk about this part let us talk about these three parts so friends in the ultrasound there is an endometrial polyp and next step will be hysteroscopy fine so such an image has already been asked and an image based question in aims pg entrance and this can be a clear cut being asked in nb pattern of exams so i move on to my second question a 36 year old woman presented with abdominal swelling for 10 months she has urinary frequency she has menorrhagia since last 2 years on examination a huge smooth mass arising from pelvis felt up to 32 week size and it is non tender her hemoglobin is 7 g percent and ultrasound was done followed by mri scan so she is 36 years and there is an abdominal swelling <clears throat> she has frequency of urination and she has menorrhagia for last 2 years a huge mass arising from pelvis up to the size of 32 weeks it is not pregnancy it is the uterine size so most common possibility clinically we can keep is the fibroid uterus so friends always first thing is to take the history second thing is do the appropriate examination third is the baseline investigation and fourth is the confirmatory investigation so friends rather clinical questions are more easy for you to answer when an associated image or investigations are given okay so clinically i have made a diagnosis of fibroid uterus 
but we have to keep the possibility of a differential diagnosis also <clears throat> so ultrasound report is showing something like uterus enlarged but we are not that much expert like a radiologist okay but it will support somewhat our diagnosis can you see this is mri so for fibroid uterus ultrasound is one of the important investigation but when you want to know the exact number of the fibroid site of the fibroid size of the fibroids any possibility of malignancy mri will be the better investigation but the, in this question both are given so let us see what is the question being asked what will be the best treatment for heart so students with the investigation it is appearing to be a big huge fibroid uterus okay big huge fibroid uterus okay here friends one thing is missing that is this female a nulliparous or she is a multiparous female so we have to take the history of obstetric history that is what is the parity what is the live issues and all so this history is missing so similarly will be our management hysterectomy directly i am not in favor of lavh in such a huge for lavh 14 to 16 week size of the uterus lavh is applicable if it is infertility or she is nulliparous i would like to take the patient for laparotomy followed by myomectomy but before that i want to give the iron or blood transfusion or parenteral iron depending okay then psc fitness is important then adequate blood should be arranged then consent of hysterectomy should also be taken and few injections of gnrh analogs should be given okay so before taking up the patient for surgery since it is a symptomatic it is a huge size fibroid so i would like to go for myomectomy if it is a nulliparous or she has a component of infertility okay but adequate hemoglobin should be build up to above more than 10 g percent all the steps to preserve the hemoglobin should be taken adequate blood must be arranged psc fitness should be done okay and consent of hysterectomy should always be taken plus few injections of gnrh analog should be given which will shrink the size of the fibroid so that surgery becomes more easy next 28 year old female attends gynae opd with abnormal pap smear report and was advised colposcopy she returned later with colposcopy report showing cin3 cervical intraepithelial neoplasia type 3 what is the next line of management this is a very very typical question which in many exams it has been asked so similar pattern has been asked in aims pg exam similar pattern is asked in nbe pattern of examination so this question is very very important number one you have to look at the age this patient is young although the parity is not mentioned abnormal pap smear report pap smear is a screening test nowadays there is a liquid paps which has been done so abnormal pap smear showing dysplasia it is to be confirmed on colposcopy so here she was uh, she was advised colposcopy and she comes later with colposcopy report showing cin3 so what is the next line of management i am not in favor of hysterectomy 
because she is young patient why to repeat the pap smear when the colposcopy which is a confirmatory investigation has already shown cin3 so <coughs> cryo surgery which means freezing the tissues is applicable for cin1 and cin2 so in modern times leap is the best treatment for cin3 leap is loop electro surgical excision procedure okay so this is the best treatment for cin3 in modern times there is a loop and a low voltage blended current is used to excise the transformation zone so since the leap has come all the procedures have taken a back seat since the age of the patient is young she has con come with confirmatory colposcopy report showing cin3 so i would like to go in favor of leap as the treatment for this case next a 39 year old presented with anemia she has history of heavy bleeding passage of clots during menses for last two years she had no gynae problem all treatment are applicable except number 1 age which is 39 number 2 she has developed anemia because of heavy bleeding passage of clots for last two years she has no gynae problems although the ops history is not given in this question okay and what all treatment is applicable to this patient except okay so they are not asking for further investigation they are just straight away asking for the treatment let us see so iron trexamic acid is applicable to restore the or to treat the anemia and to treat the heavy bleeding that is menorrhagia so this is applicable since she is 39 year of age so lng iucd that is mirena can also be applied mirena is a hormone releasing iucd it contains 52 mg of levonorgestrel it contains 52 mg of levonorgestrel effective period is 5 years failure rate is 0.1 per 100 women year and it reduces the menstrual blood loss in 97% cases so mirena will be a very very good alternative for treating such a case in few years she will attain menopause but one thing i would like to mention here is i would like to go for a dnc first in this case before i prescribe any hormonal treatment in this patient okay so i want a histopathological report which rules out any possibility of malignancy since she is almost near 40 years of age okay why to go for hysterectomy no there is no way that hysterectomy is recommended in this case endometrial ablation can also be tried if her family is complete or any medical treatment fails so relatively i will not go for hysterectomy in this case next a 43 year old female is referred from general practitioner to the gynecologist patient complaining of pain during the periods periods are heavy since last 3 years periods last for 7 to 9 days pain starts 2 3 days before the onset of periods lasts for a week she had two normal deliveries on examination there is tenderness in the abdomen in the suprapubic region on bimanual examination 
uterus appears 10 weeks size and tender, no adenexal mass, transvaginal scan was done and it showed like this. Appears to be uniformly enlarged uterus. Okay. So let us see. 43 year old. She has pain during the periods that is dysmenorrhea. Okay. And she has heavy periods. So there is history of menorrhagia and the dysmenorrhea comes 2-3 days before the onset of periods. So that means this is congestive dysmenorrhea. Okay. She had two normal vaginal deliveries. Age is 43 years and uterus is enlarged 10 week size and tender. But there is no adenexal mass. So students, this is a clear cut classical history of adenomyosis. Adeno means glands. Meiosis means muscle. Nowadays, trend of NBE exams is to give long statement questions. That is why I have come up with uh, some special cases which is always, always been asked in NBE exams. And this is just a trial. Okay, I will be releasing more of my videos. Okay, just to help you out. So classical presentation that is 43 year old, menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, tender uterus. So this is clear cut case of adenomyosis. And ultrasound also somewhat appears just like that. Okay. So clinically also, it is not fibroid. Fibroid doesn't present like this. It is not endometriosis because it is written that adenexa is free. And most common site for endometriosis is ovary, where it is chocolate cyst, ovary. So ovarian cyst is also ruled out. So this is adenomyosis, okay? Adenomyosis, if you have any doubt, the next line of investigation for adenomyosis is MRI scan. And confirmatory is always the histopathological examination in case you decided to go for surgery. So just to explain, I have taken two more uh, images. This is an image of MRI scan, which is showing uniform enlargement. There is no irregularly enlarged part, so it is not fibroid. And this is another image, which is a laparoscopy image showing adenomyosis, that is endometrial glands in the myo. Medium and you can see uterus is uniformly enlarged. So it is not fibroid. It is adenomyosis. Usually adenomyosis is most of the time associated with endometriosis. So I frame next questions just to help you out and just to give you a clinical scenario or a more idea of clinical questions. Okay. What will be the further investigation in case your diagnosis of adenomyosis on ultrasound is suspicious. Okay. You're not 100% sure. So next will be MRI scan. Okay. All treatments are applicable in this case except, okay, tranexamic acid and mephinemic acid, yes, to treat menorrhagia and to treat the pain of dysmenorrhea. Okay. GnRH analogs can also be tried. LNG IUCD can also be tried. Hysterectomy. Although as a first line, we don't do, okay, we can always offer her Myrina, Hematinix, hemostatic drugs, GnRH analogs, but uterine artery embolization is not applicable. Uterine artery embolization is usually done in case of fibroid uterus not responding to medical treatment. Uterine artery embolization is also applicable in case of PPH. Uterine artery embolization is also applicable if there is cervical ectopic pregnancy. Okay, so this is not such a case. 
So I would like to mark the answer here as uterine artery embolization has no role in adenomyosis. Next, a 14 year old girl has come to gynecology with her mother. Her periods have not started. Okay, she has not developed the breast nor the pubic hair, nor the axillary hair. She is the shortest girl in the class. On examination, her height is 120 centimeter, weight is 58 kg. She has wide neck, nipples are widely spaced. This is on the examination part. Ultrasound was done, shown a small sized uterus and bilateral ovaries were small. No follicles were seen. Neck investigation so clinically all of you know this is clear-cut case of Turner syndrome 14 year old girl no menarche no thilarche no pubarche started so 14 year old girl thilarche pubarche menarche not started that means ovaries are not functioning plus she is short stature plus nipples are wide plus no follicles okay so what will be your next line of management so congenital webbing widely spaced nipples stature you can't judge from the image okay there's cubitus valgus deformity and they have congenital heart disease also so always confirmatory for turner syndrome is karyotype that means 45 X O. So friends, that's all from this trailer part. I will be coming up with my subsequent videos on clinical case presentation. Thank you.